Hello everyone, welcome to Pumpkin Horror. Now today we're going to touch base on my collection of the Living Dead dolls from Mezgo Toys. I do have quite a few of them here, not that many, but I do still want to collect. There is in fact one I still want to get a hold of. It's um, the Pinhead from Hellraiser 3, but unfortunately people are pricing it like $169 and even as high as over $200 for that thing. And honestly, it's not worth $200, so I am not buying it for that price. So hopefully somewhere along the lines, I will find it cheap enough where I'll make that decision. And go ahead and invest in it because uh, Hellraiser is in fact my all-time favorite franchise. So with this in mind, we're going to touch base on each of the Living Dead dolls that I have so far. I also want to let you know I do have another one on pre-order. It is the Jenna Ortega Wednesday doll. Uh, that should be coming in when it becomes available. We'll do a video on that separately. As I will do these in separate installments, but it will be in the same video, so keep that in mind. I do have a total of six of these guys right now. So we'll go ahead and touch base on these. Now what I'll do, as you're seeing it right now, I'll let you take a look at it. And what I'll do is I'll actually pull it down we'll, you know, get a uh, close look at it. So in the meantime, I will be right back. Okay, we're back. And what we're going to do is we're going to visually inspect this doll. And the articulation is the same in all the dolls. The arms move and the legs move. But the knees do not. So that's the only articulation they have other than the head. It does swing back and forth. But it's very tight. And I don't mess with it for that reason. But anyway, let's just get a, give it a close look. I'm going to put this to the side so we can get a close look at the face. Let me see if I can get him in there. See, that's pretty cool looking. Pennywise. Bill Skarsgård's version. Okay. I do have another one. I forgot about that one. Um, I do have another Pennywise coming in. It is the Tim Curry version coming in. Uh, when it becomes available, we'll do a video on that as well. Okay. All right. It's got the collar and everything. Uh, the ruffles. It's pretty cool. Let's get into the arms here. Now, it does not come with other, um, too many accessories other than the balloon for this particular guy. When it comes to the Living Dead dolls, they don't really have too many accessories. It's more or less just about the doll. Okay, that's the red balloon. Okay. Alright. The feet. I don't know if you can see that or not. I know it's kind of dark. I'm sorry about that. The bottom, as you can see, they're quite big. So you can stand these up without a problem. They don't have holes in them because obviously they're Mezco figures. Uh, NECA in themselves have a tendency to do that because of their figures being small footed and stuff like that, with a few exceptions. Okay, the hair here is absolutely fucking cool. Okay. All right. But yeah, that is very cool looking. All right. Uh, getting back to the NECA figures, they got the NECA stands for them. And most of my figures have those NECA stands. I must have went through like five or six packs of those just for all my figures. But these guys, obviously they don't have the holes on the bottom, so you can't do that. But they're big enough, so you don't have to worry about that. You just got to kind of balance them out a little bit. Okay. Now, in the arms and stuff, they're on a ball joint, so they do move around and around in a socket. But I'm not going to go twisting it around because it'll pop out, and it might be really difficult. Uh, it does swing here in the wrist, so it does have a little articulation there. Okay, let me see something here. Maybe at the elbow? No, it's just the way it is. It's just swinging because of the whole entire arm moves at one shot. Okay, but that is my Pennywise. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the next one. And as you see these, you obviously see the title uh, titles come up, and we'll talk about those guys in general. But this is my Living Dead doll based on Pennywise from the 2017 movie. Now I will be right back with the next one. Okay, welcome back, and now we're going to talk about the Bubblehead Nurse from Silent Hill 2, okay? This is a manifestation from uh, James Saunders' uh, imagination. 
Now when it comes to Silent Hill, they're very similar to the Cenobites from the Hellraiser uh, franchise, as well as the Tortured Souls. They have a very similar quality to them, uh, with the exception that this is coming from the mind of James uh, Saunders. So that's what this is all about. She's a uh, manifestation of it. And she's probably one of the most po popular ones within that movie. Minus the, uh, the Red Pyramid thing or Pyramid Head. Uh, he's the most popular one within that franchise. He's the most recognized. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull this down. I'll let you give you a nice close-up shot of the bobblehead nurse. Let's get that down here. All right, now let's start with the head. So you can see I can actually stand him up. Okay. She is a little disfigured because I think they, what they do is they pull the skin over the face. Very similar to um, yeah, the Cenobites as they tortured their skins and stuff. It's very sexualized nature when it comes to Clyde Barker. He has such a, a weird imagination, but it's absolutely amazing the way he does things. Especially in the very first movie when it comes to Hellraiser. Uh, those are very tortured skin, twisted skin type situations where they got all kinds of metal configurations coming out. It's very torturous like. I love that concept about horror movies. This is no different. They are very similar to the Cenobites or the Tortured Souls. Except they don't have all the crazy accessories on it. Until you um, actually uh, see towards the end uh, where the one female does fight the Pyramid Head. And he ends up getting saw blades in her head, you know, showing her real self. Uh, that's where it reminds me of the Cenobites. But anyway, she uh, has kind of skin wrapped around, or some kind of material wrapped around her face. All right, and she's got what looks like a very pig-like nose. That's kind of weird looking, yeah. Let's give that a close look there. Okay. The hat. As you can see, she's got a dirty nature to her clothing and stuff. Alright. The back of the head. Alright. Now, I do have other figures coming in from Silent Hill. Uh, they are actual... I do have two Mezco figures that are very tiny. They're like two or three inches tall. They're very highly detailed. Uh, I will do a video on those one day. Uh, they're very cool looking. Especially with the pyramid head. They're very nicely detailed. All right, getting close up to the actual uniform. As you can see, it's blood stained. The arms are tarnished with blood, and and it's aged and rotted. Okay, this is very cool. When I seen this on a uh, big bad toy store, I, said, I gotta get it because I love Silent Hill too because of the Cenobites. Because Hellraiser in itself is my all-time favorite franchise. And that's the feet. Okay, see, even got a little bit of blood down on the shoes and stuff. Right, blood stain on the back. Okay. She is soaked with blood. Okay. All right. Now keep in mind the articulation is the same as the other figures. The legs move back and forth, and the arms do twist. But we're not going to show you that because you've already seen it. Okay. But these are the heels. Okay. Again, blood stained. Everything about this nurse is blood stained. But that is my bobblehead nurse, okay? Alright. And now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the next living dead doll. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back and we're going to be looking at Ghostface from the Scream franchise. Now I've actually seen all of the movies and I got all of them uh, for the most part because I do like the Scream franchise. They're very serial killer-like, okay? They are horror-esque, but they're not, I mean, he's a slasher, but not on the level of Michael Myers or Jason or anything like that, but uh, because there's different uh, people that are actually doing the killing and stuff. The very last movie that just came out, I thought it was good. A lot of people didn't like it. Uh, you know, it's typical when they say, say stuff like that, but what I liked about it was the actual gore factor, how intense the stabbing was and stuff. That really, when I started watching that and how they were stabbing, it's like, okay, that's very cool. I like the way they kill people. They, they are hell-bent on killing your ass, okay? <laughs> but anyway, this is my living dead doll based on uh, Ghostface. So we're going to bring him down. 
Okay, we're going to look at his face, okay? And I'll tell you what, when it comes to the Living Dead dolls, they did a really nice job on the mask. As you can see, it's a whole skull configuration. It's not an actual mask, but it's cool the way they did that, okay? I'll put that back up here. Now, when it comes to the hood, it's got a little bendy wire, so you can configure it. You know, you can kind of shape it a little bit, so it does that. Or you can just kind of stretch it a little bit. You do whatever you want. Okay, but it's got a little bendy wire in it, so you can shape the hood. Okay. All right, now the arms here. He's wearing gloves, as you can clearly see. Now the articula oops, sorry. The articulation in this thing is the same as the other dolls, okay? Now I got this. This is my latest one so far. And like I said, I got those two other ones coming in. Uh, but I got to wait for the pre-orders to come in. But anyway, now the actual cloth-like material is almost, as you can see, see, very similar to the very first one. Except the first one had long strips. Okay, so it hasn't really changed. The actual um, gown, as you want to say it, I don't know what you want to say. Uh, it's very similar to the very first one, but obviously they, they go through changes. They go through changes. <laughs> okay, and that is the actual knife. You can slip it in there, as you can see, it's loose. So it can go into the hand. All right. Now, because it's got like static buildup on this, you got to kind of pull it off the, the doll so it hangs naturally. Okay? He's got a big butt too, so keep that in mind. <laughs> but anyway, that is my ghost face. Okay? Alright, keep that up so you can actually see the hand, okay? That's my ghost face, guys. Now, the feet are huge. Okay? As you can see, they're really almost Frankenstein-like, okay? Frankenstein monster-like. They should do, like, uh, Living Dead Dolls based on front the front classic, uh, Universal Classic Monsters. I think that would be absolutely cool. Now, I do got NECA figures based on the Wolfman, Dracula. Uh, I got a couple of Frankensteins. Um, outside of that, um, there is... The Bride of Frankenstein, I do have that on pre-order. That will eventually come in, and we'll do a video on that as well. But they, these are the shoes, as you can see, and you can stand it up rather easily, okay? But anyway, that there, my friend, is my Living Dead doll based on Ghostface from the Scream franchise. So now I will be back because I'm going to show you another one here, right here in a second. Be right back. Okay, we are back with yet another Living Dead doll, and it's based on the Conjuring series, which also has the Nun, as well as um, uh, the actual story in itself, based on ghosts haunting the place, which is based on the Nun and stuff like that. Uh, Annabelle is a separate part of the uh, Conjuring series. They do have three separate movies based on Annabelle. The actual doll was, in fact, a Raggedy Ann doll that was said to be possessed by a demon and it is locked up somewhere and whether it's true or not makes for an interesting story but anyway they decided to go ahead and create uh, something based on that Raggedy Ann doll in this version of the doll so that actual demon possesses this particular doll according to the movies uh, but it is Annabelle and there's three separate movies based on it um, but it is connected to the Conjuring series when it comes to the Nun, as well as um, the uh, actual characters in the Conjuring movies. Uh, so what, with this in mind, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Annabelle uh, doll. I do have uh, a NECA figure based on it. She's sitting in a chair inside the glass case, which is very similar to the one in the movie. And it says, do not open. Okay. But anyway, let's go ahead and give this a look, okay? Now, I originally did do this video clip, but the damn battery on this um, camcorder, they don't last long at all. They're absolutely horrible. So I have to keep it plugged in when I do these videos. This way it doesn't go ahead and shut off on me. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the sign right now. 
Now, anytime you get an Annabelle doll, regardless of its size, it should come with this sign. Now, I got actual mini NECA figures that are based on it. It also comes with this sign. And I got an even smaller one that has a little tiny Miss Me sign. All right, but that, anyway, that's what this is here, guys. Okay. And that's what the Living Dead doll, okay. Now, the dolls in themselves, they only stand about 8 inches tall. They're about the same size as a regular NECA figure. But, obviously, from Mezgo, they're a little bit more detailed. Okay, that's... There's no different heads and no different accessories. With the exception of that sign. And the other ones that I showed you in the past. Uh, they have, like, uh, Pennywise has a balloon. And Ghostface has a knife. But outside of that, they don't have accessories like the NECA figures. But anyway, this is Annabelle. She's like, hi, my name is Annabelle. She's cutie tootsie. <laughs> She's got nice little ponytails too, serious ponytails. Okay. Look at that. The texture of it. They really did a nice job on the hair and stuff. Okay, look at that. Okay. Turn it around, show you the front. Again, the, uh, the uh, articulation is the same in all these dolls. Okay, and this is what she looks like from way back. Okay. The feet are small, smaller than usual, but they do stand, as you can see. All right. But outside of that, sorry about the camera, this is my Annabelle doll. Now, I would love to get me one of those full-size ones, but unfortunately, they are way too high priced for me. They're like $600, just like the Chucky dolls from Trick or Treat Studios, as well as, I think it's Mezco or somebody does the full-size ones. I can't remember, but anyway, they do have some really nice ones out there, but they're way out of my price range. Unfortunately, if I was rich, I'd be buying all that crap. But anyway, this is my Annabelle doll. And now we're going to move on to the next one. And then we got one more after that. So I'll be right back. Okay, we are back with the nun. Okay, and that's also from the Conjuring series. To me, she is the most popular one of the bunch. But the most unique one within the Conjuring series, unfortunately... They don't really pay too much attention to it. It is the Crooked Man. I do have the NECA figure based on the Crooked Man. I think he's absolutely very cool looking. Uh, they should do a Living Dead doll based on him. I think it would be cool, but unfortunately he's not as popular as the Nun or Annabelle. Those two are the most popular within the Conjuring series and the most recognized. But the Crooked Man would be cool to have one of those. And like I said, I got the NECA figure. It's a very cool looking figure. He's very skinny looking and very scary looking. When you only see him for like maybe 10 seconds in the second movie, I think it is. Uh, where, you know, what's his name? Patrick, I think it is. He goes into the tent and he sees the uh, zoetrope. And all of a sudden the figures on the zoetrope disappear. And boom, he, he shows up. Scares the fuck out of you. And all of a sudden he's flying through the walls and stuff like that. Very cool scene. But unfortunately, they were actually supposed to make a movie based on the Crooked Man. But they put that on the, uh, the back burner for now. Because uh, they just want to concentrate on The Nun. The Nun 2 is actually supposed to be coming out pretty soon. And I'm waiting for that to come out. So I can check that out. But anyway, this is The Nun from the Conjuring series. Uh, as well as its own separate movies, The Nun and Nun 2. Uh, there's no telling how many more they will make. But anyway, that's what this is. So let me go ahead and shut that down. And we're going to look at the nun. Okay. Let's look at her face. Scary looking face. Her <gasps> ah! eyes are green, I think. Got a little green tint to them. Kind of ghostly looking. Okay, now the hood in itself, my, my necker figure, the hood comes right off. Okay. Or I don't know what you call these things. But this one doesn't do that, so it's all solid. Again, the head does turn, but I'm not going to turn it. The cross, a wooden cross. Okay. 
close up here. The hands. Very living dead doll looking. Got little fat fingers, okay? Now, the feet. They're very similar to ghost face, except they're not as pronounced. They're not as thick. But they, this does stand well, okay? Again, with the gown, you gotta kind of stretch it. So she hangs naturally, like that. Alright. There's the back of it. I think this is called a habit or something. This is actually called a habit. I'm not sure if it is. I'm not sure about the nunistry. But anyway, yeah, let's check out that belt. That's cool looking. Okay. The necklace is actually glued to the material, so it doesn't move. But that is my nun. Okay, now. I will be right back with the very last one that I have so far. And in my opinion, she is the horror screamer. Uh, screen queen um, out of all of them she's probably the most popular one you'll know what I'm talking about I'll be right back okay we are back with the very last one that I have so far and like I said I do have two other ones coming in uh, one is the Pennywise and the other one is uh, Jenna Ortega's Wednesday that's also coming in and if they got any new ones coming out and they're reasonably priced through pre-order or something. I'm definitely going to set them up and give you guys a look at them. But anyway, this is the Elvira figure. It is the very first Living Dead doll that I ever purchased. And I purchased that a couple months ago. Okay. But as soon as it came in, it came in in these very cool looking boxes. I still have some of the boxes in the back. Though I have a tendency to throw out the boxes based on NECA figures and stuff. Because, you know, I obviously building them up, it, you know... It, it gets a little bit crowded with those boxes. I end up throwing them out after a while. But anyway, let me shut this down so you can see Elvira. Okay. Now when it comes to her hair, it is very delicate because when I was in my room with it, what happened is uh, she fell off the uh, stand. I didn't know about it. She was behind the uh, bookcase. So I picked her up and her hair was a little ruffled. So I had to fix it up. So, but anyway, let's go ahead and look at Elvira here. She's very cool looking. Got a very nice little look about her. Very kind look. And obviously, mm-hmm. Uh -huh, little chesty. I love the dagger. The Necker figure has all that stuff, and it also has a candle that sits down at the bottom. Uh, that's very cool, too. Now, when it comes to the legs here, she's got sexy tan legs. <laughs> all right. Let's see. The feet in themselves, as you can see. Okay, now you can see her hair is in a serious bun, okay? Again, you got to keep the hair perfect, okay? Or you try your best, you know what I'm saying? Because she looks good with her hair being perfect, okay? But that's the back of the head. Okay. Again, like I said with the gowns, when it comes to ghost face and these other ones, you got to kind of pull it and make sure it's hanging naturally. Whoop, don't do that. Okay, there she is. In all her glory, guys. Let me push that back a bit. All right, there you go. That is my Elvira. That is my entire collection of living dead dolls as of right now. And like I said, I do have some other ones coming in. When they do come in, we'll do videos on those. Again, I do want to get a hold of the Hellraiser uh, 3 pinhead. But right now, it is just a little too pricey. I'm not willing to pay $170 for a doll. I can see paying 40 to 60 bucks for them, but no higher. I don't see the logic in that. But that's eBay and stuff like that. They set their own prices. And that, to me, is just absolutely absurd. Uh, and I found the particular pinhead on Amazon, and they were selling it for $170. I said, no, nah, I'm not going to pay that price for it. So I've got to find it cheaper. And hopefully I can find it cheaper. 
But anyway, this is my Living Dead doll collection so far. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys at the very next video.